Um, thank you very much, first of all, uh, to the to Fiji Muslim League and Makoi Education Center. Thank you very much for the invite. I feel very privileged and proud to be part of this center. Uh, and uh, it was when I joined the ministry way back in 2014 that this center was established in 2015. So to the 1,500 plus women who have gone through this center, we are very proud of you. And uh, on, be on behalf of the government and on behalf of my ministry, I put on record my commendation to the Fiji Muslim League for thinking of our women. And uh, as mentioned by the uh, previous speakers, women can do anything. And COVID-19 actually showed us the resilience that our Pacific women and also the women in Fiji showed during that time. You were at the forefront looking after your family. And when disaster struck, you were there. So recently we launched our Women Resilience Program with, with TFET and UN Women. And there was a video that was shown during the launch. And everything that was shown there was women. From food security, to looking after children, to sort of finding a place for shelter. And I was asking myself, where are the men? So what, what is traditionally our role in the Pacific cultures was actually shown there. I mean, we have men uh, delegated to other duties. But most of the responsibilities fall upon women, food security, to give them children, etc. So I must say we are very proud of you and to the women of Onoi Lao. You look very beautiful today and uh, you deserve it. To all our support, the Australian government and DFED for the support and all the partners who are here for the support that is provided to these women. And there's a long way for you to go. Sometimes you may feel you are not heard, you are not seen. But today you are here, heard and seen very clearly about what you can achieve. And there's a long way for you to go. With the right support mechanism, I think women in Fiji have a lot of opportunities. Right? And uh, recently we were in New York and uh, telling the world about the status of women in Fiji. Progress has been made, but there's a lot that is still yet to come. Uh, institutions, NGOs, FBOs like the Fiji Muslim League, they have put in a lot of resources and funding and technical expertise in trying to equip you with, with skills. Now that skill, nobody can take away from you, whether you are in Lao, whether you are in Kandavu, whether you are in any part of, the, of Fiji. If you have the skills, you will look after yourself and your family. And today, this centre, with the support of all stakeholders, has given you that exactly. And what is important is that piece of paper that you will get, your certificate. Because that is an evidence of the skill that you have. Take it anywhere that you go. Use it to fend for yourself, to make money for yourself, to look after your families. And that gives you a status in the society. You know, people in the islands, we understand the grassroots. You, have, you don't have access to services and all these opportunities. But here you are graduating today with the support of everybody present in the room. So I would like to congratulate you and of course um, to the center. This is one center that uh, accommodates diverse cultural groups of people. I mean, it doesn't discriminate. <coughs> oh, we're only going to have a Muslim, uh, Muslim women training here, we're going to have Ethiopian women. It's open to everybody and that's what makes this unique. So all of us should be proud of a center like this that exists for everybody. And that is what we call by, by having an inclusive society. Okay? So uh, I thank the League for that. And as a ministry, we will continue to support you and continue, continue to support many other women across Fiji. And, who, and those of, who are yet to enter the doors of this institution, please go out and spread the work that the centre does. And of course we need the funding to run this. So all those uh, stakeholders that have been providing funding to the institution, uh, we thank you for that. And uh, we believe that we have a big issue in Fiji, you know that. I always talk about that domestic violence. I always talk about that. Fiji rates very high in terms of violence against women. And one of the ways I believe that we can help women get out of abusive relationships is through socio-economic empowerment. We give you the means to earn a bit of living. Financially, if you are financially independent, there's a lot of things you can do. And my work with the ministry has shown me that women stay in abusive relationships because this. You don't have the power to earn for yourself and your children. I'm not saying you leave your husband when they beat you up. I'm just saying that, that financial independence gives you a bit of power. 
and relationships are supposed to be balanced ones. In the Pacific, in the Pacific, all across the Pacific, all the countries have this problem, the, the issue of violence. And some of us, if you really look deep into it, it's because of the culture that we grew up in. We grew up in the Pacific cultures believing that men are more powerful or higher than whatever you call them, whichever way. And women are supposed to be the submissive partners in a relationship. But no, we need to build respectful relationships. Men and women must learn to live in a very respectful relationship. Whether you earn or your, your partner earns, it, it shouldn't make a difference. It has to be uh, contributing equally to your, to your family. And of course you must understand that your behavior as parents affect children. We have a lot of children that learn abusive behavior from their parents. So we need to cut that out. And that is the biggest problem we have in the Pacific for us. So ladies and gentlemen, today it's all about you. It's about what you have achieved. It's about how proud as a society we are of you. And we thank you for being uh, bold enough to leave your homes, leave your families, leave your children, to be here for three weeks. And I hope your three weeks was a wonderful time. And as I said before, go back and uh, talk about the center and how the center can affect many, many other lives, okay? It's just you need to have the willpower to come out and, and sh showcase whatever is here. So to all of us in the room, thank you, thank you for being part of this uh, very, very important program today. Shazna, thank you very much for looking after and to the president and the founders who are both here today. Thank you very much for all that you do for our women. And of course, at the end of the day, we as a society come out as winners. It's not about women, it's not about men. It's about our society, how inclusive we are and how we support each other. And I'd also like to thank you all for the support you showed during COVID, the restrictions you abided by. Now we are slowly opening up, okay, but still you need to be a bit more cautious. Even though masking, everything has been restricted. But please, in your space, you still need to be careful about protecting your family and everybody. So thank you very much and uh, yeah, God bless you all. Thank you.